Carlos Deville is the sweet, acrobatic son of the notorious Disney villain Cruella Deville from 101 Dalmatians. In the Descendants movies, Carlos, Mal, Evie, and Jay try to leave their evil roots behind to join the fairy tale kids at Aradon Prep. Watch until the end to find out about Carlos' tragic past and why he always felt different than the other VKs. I guess you guys have it pretty rough on the island. Yeah. Carlos's full name is Carlos Oscar Deville. He is the descendant of the puppy crazed villain Cruella Deville. When we meet him in the first movie, it's clear that he has had a rough childhood, but he was actually first introduced in the book Isle of the Lost, a descendant's novel. In the book, Carlos was bullied by none other than Jay and Mal. He has a cousin named Diego, who is thought to be the son of Cruella's brother, Cecil B. Deville. He made an appearance on the 101 Dalmatians TV show. We know that Carlos was raised to think that dogs are ferocious beasts, which caused him to have an embarrassing fear of even the smallest of canines. Luckily, he overcame that fear and even befriended Dude the Dog in Descendants 2. But let's go back a bit and find out more about the background of this son of a puppy thief. In order to do that, we should probably go back to before he even came into the picture. Let's take a look at his mom, Cruella Deville. Do you remember the song from Disney's 101 Dalmatians with the lyrics, Cruella Deville if she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. But just how did Cruella wind up with that curl in her lip and that ice in her stare? If you put the two parts of her last name together, it spells devil. But surely she wasn't always mean and sinister, right? Well, apparently she was always evil even as a baby. In the Christmas episode of 101 Dalmatians, the TV series, Cruella's parents had left her with a babysitter over the holidays. They sent her a Christmas present signed, Mr. and Mrs. Deville, instead of mom and dad. Clearly they weren't very close to their child. Anyway, Cruella is really hoping for a puppy, but when she opens her gift, it's just a polyester outfit. Let's just say Cruella did not take this very well. She threw a huge temper tantrum. Then she had her babysitter shipped away in a box, proving she's always had an evil streak. In the show, The Ghost of Christmas Past psychoanalyzes Cruella. The spirit puppy said it's obvious that her yearning for a puppy when she was a child represented something deeper. The spirit pup said it represented a deep-seated need to substitute the love she didn't get from her parents with a dog. So if Cruella was never taught how to love by her own parents, how could she possibly be able to properly show love to her own son, Carlos? Here's what we know about the relationship Carlos has with his mother. In the first Descendants movie, it seems like Cruella was really going to miss Carlos when he left to go to Aradon. That is until we see that the real reason she wants him around is so he can touch up her roots, fluff her fur, and scrape the bunions off my feet. Ew. In Isle of the Lost, we get a glimpse at just how tough it was for Carlos growing up. He is forced to sleep in his mother's dressing room, which was bear traps scattered throughout to protect her furs. This may have contributed to Carlos's acrobatic skills and cleverness, since he had to find alternative ways to enter the room so he could sleep. Carlos was forced by his mother to look after and clean her furs. Cruella made it abundantly clear that she loves her furs more than she loves Carlos, but we're pretty sure she doesn't love him at all. What kind of mother refers to her car as her baby, but not her own child? It's no wonder he developed quirky little survival skills like reciting the periodic table to himself when he gets nervous. So how did Cruella maintain such a tight grasp of control over Carlos. How did she get him to provide her with free slave labor all those years? Well, this is the super evil part. Cruella instilled a huge fear of dogs into young Carlos's mind. She used this fear to control him. She told him that dogs are rabid pack animals who eat boys who don't behave. So Carlos did all this fur fluffing, root touch-ups, and callus scraping because he was afraid. He thought if he didn't do all those things, a pack of vicious dogs would come and eat him. Not cool, Cruella. It seems that Cruella's control extended over the waters, following Carlos all the way to Aradon Prep. In the opening number of Descendants 2, Carlos sings that he can still hear his mother's voice in his head. So how did Carlos cope? Well, Carlos was given a cat named Beelzebub when he was little. At Evie's sixth birthday party, Carlos received one of Lucifer's kittens. You remember Lucifer, Lady Tremaine's evil cat from Cinderella. All right, Lucifer. What did you do with it? This little kitten helped Carlos get through many troubling times. Just like his mother when she was little, Carlos had to look to a pet in order to get the affection that was missing from his parental figures when he was growing up. We're not sure what happened to Beelzebub. We don't see the cat in the Descendants movies. Maybe Cruella fed it to some rabid dogs to teach Carlos a lesson. Sounds like something she would do. Poor Carlos. 
And speaking of parental figures, who is Carlos's dad? He hasn't been brought up in the films at all. It seems like single parenthood is a consistent thread among the villains on the aisle. It must be pretty hard to maintain a healthy relationship with all the evil plotting and scheming they do. There must not be much time for anything else. Plus, there's a good chance that they wouldn't make the best partners, being that every one of them is pretty self-centered. Still, it takes two to produce a villain offspring. That's just how biology and procreation works. So who is Carlos's father? One fan has a theory about who Carlos's dad could be. She points out that Cruella isn't exactly dripping with hot dates. In fact, the only men she is usually seen with are her henchmen, Jasper and Horace. According to one fan, it's probably Jasper, since he has a thin build like Carlos. But another fan theory is even wackier. This Descendants Theory blogger breaks it down for us. Apparently, Cruella had forbidden Carlos to ever ask about his father, even though he was very curious and would have loved to know more about him. So who is this mystery man? Since Carlos was conceived on the aisle, it's safe to assume that his dad must be some other Disney villain. And since there is no mention of him, he could either be deceased, escaped, or locked in Cruella's dressing room for displeasing her. But if that last one were true, Carlos would have surely run into him. So we don't have a lot to go on. However, let's look at Carlos to get some clues. Carlos's skin tone is lighter than his mom's, so his father must have lighter skin. Carlos is also pretty tech savvy. He made a machine that once broke the barrier of the aisle. He was able to break down the alarm system of the Museum of Cultural History too. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, false alarm. So maybe his father is some sort of tech genius. So if he is a Disney villain, who could he be? The Descendants Theory blogger did a quick rundown on Carlos's attributes to narrow it down. The blogger pointed out that Carlos's dad must be a Disney villain who is white and has freckles. He also must be good at technology, and he's most likely deceased or otherwise unavailable. Here's the crazy part. This blogger narrowed it down to one wackadoo villain who goes by the name of King Candy. Carlos is sort of obsessed with chocolate, and in Return to the Isle of the Lost, Carlos says he learned how to drive so he could chauffeur his mother around, even though Cruella could have just asked one of her henchmen to do so. This fan thinks that's a hint from Cruella. Since King Candy is a race car driver from two video games, it makes sense that Carlos would be a good driver. King Candy also understands how to recode the game, Sugar Rush, in order to put himself in charge. So there's the tech-savvy part of the equation. But can a video game character hook up with a fur-wearing lunatic? Who knows? All we know is that it's pretty heartbreaking that Carlos grew up without ever knowing who his father is. He wasn't even allowed to ask any questions about his dad. He's had to rely on his friends and his pets for love and companionship. Then there's the bullying. I was gonna say that. Oh, but I said it first. <gasps> sure, Mal, Evie, and Jay are good friends with Carlos now, but it wasn't always that way. We know from the books that Mal and Jay bullied Carlos. One time in the Isle of the Lost, Mal forces Carlos to throw a party at Cruella's house so she could mess with Evie. Then Mal pranks Evie, locking her in Cruella's closet. Carlos helped Evie escape from the dressing room, making her his first human friend. For this reason, Carlos stands out against the other VKs, because, well, he showed Evie mercy in her time of need. Carlos doesn't become friends with Mal and Jay until Evie convinces him to join their quest to restore the magic in Maleficent's staff. But it seems that Jay still picks on Carlos a lot. So Carlos, who is the youngest in the VK gang, has been abused and enslaved by his mother. And on top of that, he is bullied by the other kids. That's a pretty rotten childhood. How did he turn out to be so nice after all of that? Well, we think that his friendship and his companion, Dude the Dog, helped a lot. There's a great scene in the first Descendants movie when Carlos stands up to his mother. The villain kids are in a video chat set up by the fairy godmother so they can talk to their parents on family day at Aradon Prep. The villains are doing their best to appear sweet and pretend that they really care about their kids, but the BKs can see right through them. They know that all they care about is getting fairy godmother's magic wand. The kids are away from their parents, so for the first time the parents don't have control over them. Carlos stands in front of the video chat screen holding dude the dog. Cruella jumps up and yells at Carlos asking him if he actually is holding a dog. Then she creepily talks to the stuffed dog on her shoulder, saying she thinks Dude the Dog would make the perfect size for earmuffs. Then Carlos stands up to her, saying that his dog is the perfect size for a pet. He proclaims his love for the dog and says Dude loves him too. Then he reminds her that while he has a living and very loving dog, his mom's dog is stuffed. Then he yells at her, So give it a rest! Well done, Carlos. Someone's got to stand up to that horrible woman. His outburst really shocked Cruella because, well, it proved that he no longer believed in her brainwashing tactics. 
Despite his heartbreaking backstory, Carlos is still a pretty lovable character. He's got mad acrobatic skills, he can juggle, he's a total tech whiz, a loyal friend, and a pretty sweet boyfriend to Jane. Carlos overcame his fear of dogs, even though he was brainwashed into thinking they were vicious animals that could possibly eat him. This proves that he can think for himself and make his own decisions. He is brave, adventurous, caring, and funny. And even though Carlos was bullied by the villain kids at first, he was able to turn them into valuable allies and true friends. This goes to show that even a person that has been treated badly in the past, they can turn it around and create their own future. One fan revealed that they appreciated Carlos's character so much more after they learned about his backstory. The fan said his life was absolutely heartbreaking. They also added that Carlos is so much more than just the son of a villain and that he truly is a good boy. So what part of Carlos's backstory was the most heartbreaking to you? Hit us up in the comments and let us know what makes Carlos so special. Give this video a big thumbs up if you think Carlos is the greatest. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to The Things, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell to be the first to see our latest videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time!